guys and I talk about choosing the hard right over the easy wrong as soon as you wake up. That first choice sets the precedence for everything you do that day. So you wake up, you got miles to run, like fuck, it's raining. You gotta embrace that, man. Like having one more, one more hard piece add to your plate in the morning, having one more challenge, one more reason for you to say, ah, uh, I don't wanna do this today. That's an opportunity. I talk about these opportunities all the time. You take these opportunities and you pivot. So like me running in the morning, I had to make that choice. Me running in the rain, that's another choice I had to make. And when you overcome that, you get through that and you compound over and over again. It's not that one choice. It's not running in the rain that one time that's gonna change your life. It's implementing that every single day. That choice of choosing the hard thing to do over the easy thing to do. That's a go one more mindset. That's a go one more mentality. That is what we live and breathe every single day. I'm soaking this in right now. It's raining, we're training, I'm soaked, and I'm loving it. Here we go. There's something about running in the rain that literally makes my legs shake. Like I get, I get super excited. It's as soon as I got out of the truck this morning in the rain, I could feel like this boost of like adrenaline just flowing through my arms and my legs. Like I was like literally shaking because I was so excited. It reminds me of being in the army, like running PT in the army, just being soaked and like you're, you're stepping through like puddles and like foot deep of, of just water. And it took me back and I just like, I thoroughly enjoy it. Every once in a while, not every day, but every once in a while. Solid start to a morning. That's what I'm talking about. I got a team here with me. I got Trey, Jordan, Yuli, which helps bring me these, these videos together and capture these moments. Solid start to the day. What do you guys say? Hi, mom. What you, Trey? I don't know. Trey's sleepy. He's sleepy. Looking at tacos, man. <laughs> Looking at tacos. We're gonna get some breakfast tacos. Head back to the office. See you guys there. <sighs> Little in focus to kick off the morning. So we are in our final week before we transition all operations from Suite 360 to Suite 370. Operations being order fulfillment. And I'll walk you through some of the things we, we have finalized and you might not have seen yet that are really coming together. Conveyor belt, flow track system, it's a badass setup and I'll show you guys here shortly. This weekend coming up is a big weekend because for the past like three months, we've been working pre-production for this big commercial we're filming. We're gonna be filming Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The commercial is going to be all about testing for banned substances. Because you guys know we are part of the BSCG drug-free program. We test all of our products for banned substances. So we're making this commercial with some humor involved that's gonna be filmed over the course of three days that we're gonna use for organic and paid advertising. It's gonna be really awesome. So all the work we've put in for the last three months is coming together this weekend. There's a lot of things coming together right now. That video, uh, warehouse operations, new office build out. Black Friday is gonna be here before we know it. Lots of things going on. Let me show you this new setup. So this right here is our flow track system. Now we have packing stations, conveyor belt. Uh, each order fulfillment specialist can just stay in this spot right here. And this flow track system can hold like for each product, for some products, days worth. Uh, for products that don't move as fast as others, like strong greens, strong reds, for example, will have to be restocked daily, possibly multiple times a day, but we can fit so much inventory for each packer on one of these flow tracks. And they flow down as cases. So as one case is complete, you pull the case off and another case files forward. So we have the flow track system for each order fulfillment specialist set up behind their respective packing stations. And then this is what each packing station will look like. Each packing station will be equipped with a scale, a wireless printer, everything order fulfillment wise, we actually done 
through these iPhones. All of the packaging material will be housed above the packing station and below. And then as soon as someone's done packing order, they push it on the conveyor belt. And then the conveyor belt here, it's broken up into sections. So it's all run by sensors. For example, if I put a package on right here, this sensor will go off, it will only run a certain part of the conveyor belt. So the package will hit the sensor, this part of the conveyor belt will move it down till it hits the next sensor. Once that sensor moves down, keeps moving the packages down the conveyor belt. So the whole conveyor belt isn't run the entire time. It's only sections to move what needs to be moved at a time. And now for the demonstration, the box goes on the conveyor belt by the sensor, sets it off and moves it down the entire line to where someone at the end will then sort the packages based off the carrier being FedEx or USPS. And that's the new setup. You see, the reason this is such a big deal to me is because when I first started Bear Performance Nutrition in 2012, I was packing orders out of two locations. First, I started packing orders out of my small college apartment. It was like a 10 by 10 foot room. And I'd pack up these packages and I'd drop them off at the local post office in Indiana, Pennsylvania on my way to class. Maybe one or two every other day. And also, we were packing orders when I couldn't pack orders, uh, when I you know, joined the army and I was in training all the time, out of my parents' house. And my parents' setup is we had this room above the garage. It was called like the bonus room, we called it. And my dad and brother would pack orders up there. So it was, it was the most inefficient setup ever. We had our printer downstairs in the basement. So my dad and brother would pack an order upstairs and then it was a wireless printer. They would run downstairs, print out the label, we didn't have like sticky labels at the time. We had to cut them out with scissors, tape them on the boxes, and then drop them off at the post office, you know, the next morning. So seeing where we started in 2012, 2013 timeframe, and now 2020, that's why this conveyor belt and this flow track and this warehouse, it really means a lot to us. You know, seeing the progression, the growth, it is, uh, it's hard to explain how much it means. It's been a wild ride wild ride so here's what's going on this this was the bike i recently picked up um the new road bike this is a canyon air road road bike and i ended up getting a medium because when i called into canyon i was like hey based off my measurements i'm on the fence of a medium and a large i'm feeling like i should get large but we ended up getting medium to find out that the medium was too small i tried raising the saddle as much as i could and making some small adjustments, but the medium bike was just too small. So I contacted Canyon. We ended up being able to exchange it. This is the medium. I have a new, large, same exact bike in the warehouse right now that we're about to open up, put together. But Jordan is gonna train for an Ironman with me. <laughs> me and Jordan Utter, 2021 Ironman, full Ironman. Gonna have to put bodybuilding to, to rest. Here's the first bike of his training. Yeah, let's do it, let's see it in the Reebok. I'm not taking my shirt off. is the new Canyon Air Road. Large, large and in charge. You don't want a bike too small. You don't want a bike too big. Well, the bike is too small. I couldn't get into a proper position where like my back was so hunched over, no matter how high I brought the saddle up, my back was still hunched over and my knees were coming so much further over the handlebars that when I was riding, 
was like, you know what? The bike feels a little small, but it wasn't until I actually saw the clip of me riding where I was like, holy crap, this bike, like it's obviously too small for me. So I knew I had to transition into a large bike just to be, I mean, with a road bike, you're gonna be on that bike for sometimes hours upon hours. And you wanna be in the most effective and efficient position possible. And being on a bike too small or a bike too big doesn't allow you to be in the most efficient and effective position possible. That's why I had to move up to the large. Man, so that 50 mile hour I did a few weeks ago, that was only my second ride after doing my Ironman last November. Um, and it felt fine, like felt comfortable. I wasn't like saddle sore at all. It was fun. So now I'm looking forward to, I'll probably do a 75 mile ride next and then a 100 mile ride. And then as I've already stated previously in videos, what I'm planning on doing after I run this sub three hour marathon and qualify for the Boston Marathon is another Ironman, which Ironman prep was just like, it's a blast. It's so different from any of the other things I'm doing. Um, the combination of, you know, I'm still weight training and swimming, cycling, biking, every day is a little different. One of the coolest things I've ever been a part of. I mean, I remember like race day showing up and it was like, it was before the sun rose. It might've been like 4.30, 5 a.m. And I just remember being on the beach in Panama City, Florida. You could see the sun rising. It's super calm, it's super quiet. All of the, the individuals doing the Ironman that day were coming out there. And just like the energy was, it was unlike many other things I've ever been a part of. And then crossing the finish line of the Ironman itself, I compared it to the day I graduated ranger school. You just had that same type of, that feel where you put in all this work and you dedicate all this energy to this one thing. It was crossing the finish line of the Ironman and getting the ranger tab. And it had the same, the same feel doing both of those things. So let's take this thing apart, let's put her together and let's get ready for a ride in the next couple of days. All right, guys, and there we go. So, really, only thing I have to do still, pump up the tires, charge the electronic shifters, get my seat uh, fitted properly, throw some water bottle cages on there, some water bottles, and we'll be good to ride. But I can already tell, just like this being a large as compared to medium, a medium, it just like standing next to it, it feels like it is the correct size. So. This light bad boy, like put, hold one hand out the camera, hold one hand out. This is how light this bike is. Light bike. This is my right? left hand. That's light. So here we are guys. Fixed the proper bike positioning. Up close and personal. This is something I've wanted to talk about in a video a lot recently. Um, this is something that crosses my mind every single day when I drive home from work and I park in my driveway, and before going in to the house and have dinner with Steph, the, the word that is in my head is just grateful. Grateful for a few things. One, all of the people in this building right here, you guys for the support, my family, my friends. But why it pops in my head is because I think back to, you know, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of like building out this new warehouse automation and order fulfillment process and the warehouse and building the team. And I think back to when I first started the brand, first couple years, you know, the first hires were, were Joe and Preston. And for those first couple years, I had to be the Swiss army pocket knife of BPN. And I love that term. I love that term because it, it describes exactly what I had to do. I had to do a little bit of everything. You know, I was the person who was in charge of inventory management and packing orders early on and marketing and advertising and social media and building the website and graphic design, like all of it. I had to learn all of it because I didn't have the money to hire people at the time. And as we have grown and scaled and built the team, we built the team slowly so that we could hire the right people for the right jobs who come motivated and disciplined and want to be a part of what we're doing. And because we've built the team slowly with the right people for the right jobs, I'm now in a position 
as the brand has grown, where I can now delegate responsibilities and know and trust that the people in charge are going to just take it and run with it. They just take it and run with it with everything they got. And that means so much to me. And I, you know, as, as the owner and CEO of Bear Performance Nutrition, my rules have now changed over the years where I'm not doing everything. I'm, I'm delegating and managing and, and leading some of that responsibility, but it's so amazing to see team members here just taking the responsibility that's been delegated to them and just running with it like it is their own, because it is. And I'm just grateful for that. And I wanted to share that with you guys. So we are on the hybrid athlete block one, week two, day one. And this is a push strength workout. So within the first block of the hybrid training program, um, it is similar workouts. However, the two things that, that change a lot, the running changes on a weekly basis, um, the percentages of your, your training on your compound movements, your bench, squat, and deadlift, they change. It's a non-linear progression. Uh, and then also some of the accessories change as well. So in today's workout, we're starting off with some core. We're doing hang leg raises, cable crunches, and then planks. And then we go into our core movement for the, the strength training portion. Bench press, we're gonna start off with one set at 65% of our one rep max for 12 reps. This is kind of just an activation set. And then we're gonna move into a five by five, five sets, five reps each at 80% of our one rep max. I'm working at an 80% uh, one rep max of 315 pounds. Then we're gonna move into some push-ups, a superset of tricep push-downs and diamond push-ups, and then moving into some cable flies. So that's today's workout. <laughs> One more. Ah! I'm talking about. Now we're moving in to the meat and potatoes. The bench press. Think about this bench press too. We just ordered these new bars. These are brand new. Rogue Ohio bars. There's nothing quite like lifting with a brand new bar. So what we're doing, first set, like I said, it's gonna be 12 reps at 65% of my one rep max being 315 right now. That is 205 pounds. That's the first set. And then we're going to do 315 times 80%. I'm gonna be working a five by five at 252 pounds. We're gonna round that up to 255 pounds, five by five. Uh, 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 come on! Uh. Now with the compound movements, with this being a non-linear periodization program for that first block of the hybrid athlete program, with your compound movements, your bench, your squat, your deadlift, when the reps get lower, like right now we're working on a five by five, you're gonna rest longer in between those sets because you're focused on full muscle and motor unit engagement and activation. You wanna be as powerful and as efficient as possible within that one set. So we're gonna rest longer and we're gonna go into it with full power output to get those prescribed reps. It's gonna be difficult, it's gonna be hard, but when you have when you have structure to your programming, it pushes you a whole lot further. You know, if I just come in and do a workout and I'm just moving through the motions, that's one thing. But if I have a, uh, a prescribed program and structure, I'm gonna work that much harder. So here we go. This is set number four. Five reps. Come on. Five reps, right here. Stay tight, stay tight. <clears throat> uh, 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 uh. Uh. 
One more. So right now we're in the middle of one-on-one -on -one offs of push-ups. So for one minute, you do as many reps as possible, and you have a one minute rest. And then one minute again, as many reps as possible, and then one minute rest. If you have to rest any period, the resting position is either up here fully extended, or you can sag in the middle like this, but you don't come to your knees. You stay up off your knees. That's some army shit right there. So we got 30 seconds till this next one. Everything you got in these. This is just a complete burner after the, that five by five on bench. Let's do it, baby. One fucking minute. One, two, three. Come on! Suck it up. Suck it the fuck up. Cable crunches. I see a lot of people doing cable crunches wrong or a lot of people reach out to me saying they can't feel cable crunches. So here's my best tips. One, find a weight, start light, find a weight that you can, you're comfortable with and then slowly move up after that, just like any other movement. Now when you get in a position, you can use uh, the cables and you can hold one each hand. Lately, I've really been liking using just like this, this rope, um, you know, chest fly, cable attachment and the way I hold it is kind of like this right here Put my index fingers on the outside right my thumbs just like this so this is the position I hold it in and when I come down in position I put my knees down first and what I think of is I want to lock my elbows to the side of my head so right here I, my, my intent is when I go through the movement my elbows are going to stay on the side of my head the entire time Right, it's like they're right here. Now I'm not pulling with my arms, I am pulling with my core. And I'm gonna pull down with the intent of thinking I'm driving my elbows to my knees. But they're not gonna go to my knees, they're gonna go to the floor. But in my head I'm thinking, drive my elbows to my knees. So right here, lock into position, elbows against my head, drive with my elbows to my knees, hit the floor, hold. Core is tight, and you're going to contract the movement by exhaling, so it's inhale up, exhale, contract. Inhale, pull with your core, not with your arms. Cable crunches, powerful movement, if done correctly. So, continuing to move on through the workout. Boom! All right guys, so that's the workout. Now, one of the things I get all the time is people say, man, Nick, it must be nice to be able to work out all day. Well, let me tell you, I don't have all day to work out. Here's the thing, with Embrace Stuck Training, I'm running the same programming within this app, and I work normal hours, just like many of you guys. So like, clear example, right now, it is 9 p.m., just finished up my workout. Tomorrow morning, I will be up again at 5 a.m. to get my eight mile run in before getting to work. I work normal hours from 7.30 a.m. until about 4.30 p.m. every day. I work before that and I work after that as well. I get my running in as soon as I wake up after a cup of coffee and I get it done before a lot of people are up. And I get my training session after work before I start work again. There are literally zero excuses. If you have to wake up earlier, you wake up earlier to get it done. If you stay up later, you stay up later to get it done. You do what you have to do, right? I wrote a book called 25 hours a day, exactly talking about that. You make your time. You prioritize your time when you wanna get things done. If you're prioritizing training, then that's it. If you're prioritizing work, then that's it. But if you're prioritizing watching TV and playing video games and BSing on social media and wasting your time, that's how you prioritize your time. Spend your time how you want to. Hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, embrace the suck and get one more. See you in the next one.